Castro and his allies lost virtually every battle. For years, they had to hide in the jungle and the, the jungles and the mountains of Cuba. They lost every battle and yet won the war. And remember the thing about a guerrilla army that the British learned about colonial America. It's not whether you win or lose battles, it's that you do what? And they survived and won. He formed a coalition government. United States wasn't sure if he was a full-fledged communist or not. He even went to the United States in 59, met with Vice President Nixon, appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show, which I think is really funny, and met uh, his members of his extended family. <laughs> I love all the beers. That's in New York City. <laughs> but when he... They grew beards for him. Give him a break. <laughs> well, but when Nixon met with him, Nixon came out of that meeting deciding that he was a confirmed communist and a follower of the Soviet Union. It's unclear if he really would have been that way, but by Nixon doing Nixon saying this and helping direct American policy against him, it pushed him towards Khrushchev because he's a communist. And by the middle of 1960, the CIA began operating or began organizing a plan to get rid of him. Just like what happened with what country did they remove the dictator in '54? I'm sorry. The, the, Democratically elected president in 54 replaced them with a dictator. Who did in Iran first and then brought them all. Similar things happened. Iraq a little bit more complex. It wasn't democratically elected. Syria was. And so they actually began to train in Guatemala. The thing was, it's 1960. There's a presidential election. It will, the operation will not be ready until the next president. That will have big consequences for the next president. So, there's Castro. He would rule for years, and he would create a pretty totalitarian state, and yeah, there he is with his brother Raul, who would take over when he, Castro got cancer, and would have to give up power, he passed away a few years ago. And Raul Castro, there he is meeting President Obama, he just gave up power a couple weeks ago. Raul Castro. Does it? Could it be? Yes. Uh, no way. Do you wonder where that name came from? Raul Castro was named after Raul C. Calhoun. Wait, you're not right. What? You didn't do it right. This is fake. Yes. No. Yes. By the way, you notice the glasses. <laughs> not a coincidence. All right, so. The election of 1960. Yes, Raul was fake. I made them all up. I thought it was funny. So, the election of 1960 was an election with you have all these forces coming together. There was a minor recession. There was the Cold War, Cuba, U2 crisis. The Cold War seemed worse than ever before. In fact, it'd be during this election year that the Soviets would explode the biggest atomic bomb ever, the 50 megaton Tsar bomb. But JFK would get the Democratic nominee. Now, this is still where primaries didn't matter very much, still being chosen at the conventions, at convention. And there are other Democrats who wanted it, but Kennedy had the great advantage in this new election because Kennedy was young, he had access to almost unlimited money. You notice how he's copying FDR like everybody did in the Democratic Party? And he chose as his running mate from Texas, Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ. And the big thing about Lyndon Johnson, he was the Senate Majority Leader. He was the second most powerful man in Washington, D.C. Nobody ever was like Lyndon Johnson as Senate Majority Leader. Nobody was ever like Lyndon Johnson. And period. Lyndon Johnson was literally the master of the Senate. Nobody got more votes through the Senate. Nobody controlled it more, controlled the entire process. Nobody's ever done like Lyndon Johnson. And he gave that up to become vice president. People have always wondered, why did he do that? Because vice presidents have only two functions. Break ties in the Senate and wait for the president. And Kennedy's 
brother who the, uh, ran his campaign, you know, become attorney general. And most of Kennedy's people hated Johnson, thought he was an uncouth Texan who was uneducated and sh they wanted him gone. In fact, they might have kicked him off the ticket in 64. It's one of these strange, amazing <coughs> things. Now, before we get to the next one, I'll tell you one more th very quick thing about Kennedy. See that boat right there? That was a very popular campaign. He was the captain of a, a it's called a patrol torpedo, a patrol boat called a PT boat. His PT boat was PT-109. And 43 in World War II, so he was a lieutenant in the Navy. His ship was rammed and split in half by a Japanese destroyer. It, he was surprised, probably they were asleep, but he was horribly injured. But he still swam a mile to shore in a little jungle island, holding another crewman who was badly injured, saved his life. And then he, with some natives, got off this island and rescued the crew. And so he was a real hero. His back was horrible. He would have to spend the rest of his life with his back brace. He kept it secret from the people how bad it was. He was on a cocktail of various medication and painkillers just to keep him functioning. In fact, he also had the disease, or almost certainly it was Addison's disease, and which was deadly. It nearly killed him twice. And he was on all these medications. In fact, he nearly died in 48 and in 57. He was given the last rites twice. He was, he was Catholic. And he was the first major nominee since Al Smith to be Catholic. And a lot of people thought that was a big deal. In fact, he was given the last rites three times on the deathbed. The last time would be his death. He got down to like, what, 110 pounds? He was six months. He was really ill. He was elected in the Senate in 58 and did virtually nothing because he needed sick or kind of had the reputation of a lightweight. Or when he was healthy, he just didn't want to do that. But that helped him. He had no record. So they could invent him. Unlike his opponent, Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon had been vice president for eight years. So everything good and bad about the Eisenhower administration, Nixon saddled with it. And remember, he was the red baiter extraordinaire, known as a hatchet man. He was called Tricky Dick. In fact, they tried to do this new Nixon, where you'd be above the fray and no longer be this duplicitous politician. So to be the new Nixon, and then the new, new Nixon, then the new, new, new Nixon, and then later on, there'd be the new, 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 new Nixon. And then he would die. But knowing Nixon, he will make a comeback. Mm -hmm. So get ready for the new, 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 new Nixon. Kennedy was the one who was really sick. Kennedy was really sick. Yeah, it was just a whole cocktail. In fact, they put him on steroids, too, to gain weight. So he was taking steroids and painkillers and barbiturates. And, I mean, he, you would not believe, and they kept it all secret. I think this being near death and various other things is part of the reason why he had thousands of extramarital affairs. But they also kept that secret. A compliant press. And so, Nixon and and uh, Nixon and Kennedy, there was a recession which they blamed the Republicans and the arms race. And they really pushed experience for Nixon and new for Kennedy. His slogan, remember, we have the New Deal, now we have the new frontier. And remember back in 1952, Republicans accused the Democrats of allowing the, allowing the Soviets to build more what weapon? What kind of weapon? Do you remember what it was? Bomber, bomber. bomber gap. Remember the bomber gap. Well, now it's the other way around. The Democrats can accuse the Republicans of allowing. And because of What's the satellite? Because of Sputnik, the missile gap. <laughs> and what the Kennedy campaign said, the Nixon, Eisen, the Eisenhower, Nixon regime, and the Republicans who controlled the presidency, they allowed the Soviets to get more missiles because of either their incompetence, their unwillingness to spend money on defense. They allowed the Soviets to have this huge advantage with long-range intercontinental ballistic missiles that could hit the United States, and there's no defense. 30 to 40 minutes, and atomic hell would rain upon the United States. 
And because of Sputnik, everybody believed it. It was a perfect cheap shot for the Democrats. They could hit and hit the Republicans, just like the Republicans did back in 52, and Republicans couldn't fight back. They knew it wasn't true. The U-2 flights told them, but the U-2s were secret. Even though they had the crash, they didn't want to admit that they had done a thousand of these flights. So they couldn't respond. There was a missile gap. The United States had over 100 ICBMs, including one of these atlases, because they're really dangerous. They still have liquid fuel, liquid hydrogen, and liquid oxygen, which is, don't play with that at home. Really dangerous. Hmm? Yeah. And so volatile, it's terrifying. The United States also had over 500 medium and intermediate range missiles in Japan, Turkey, and Italy that could reach almost every part of the Soviet Union and over a thousand bombers. Anybody want to guess how many ICBMs the Soviets had on election day? You're close, uh, you're so close. Not enough, not enough, not enough. One. <laughs> and it took two days to fuel it because the fuel was so volatile. So the point was there was a missile gap. What a perfect shot. And you want to see the Kennedy act. You ready? Yes. Do you want a man for president who's seasoned through and through? But that's a dog on season that he won't try something new. A man who's old enough to know and young enough to do. Well, it's up to you, it's up to you, it's strictly up to you. So, do we need a palate cleanser? Yeah. for president. I for president. I so, for president. Vote, vote time. Like 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 you like I. for president. Come on, which one? Okay. Also, even though it was going to be an evenly matched race, Nixon did see more experience. Kennedy really had this reputation of being a lightweight, kind of a playboy, and it looked like it was gonna be close to maybe a Nixon victory. And that's when Kennedy, who wanted something, well, he, he wanted something to get out there. He challenged Nixon to the first ever presidential debate between candidates of, of different parties. For the nominee, there are a couple in the 50s, but they didn't really go anywhere. This is the first ever presidential debate. And now with TV. Now, Nixon really wanted this, too. Nixon's like, perfect. I am smarter. I'm more articulate. I can speak to the people. And so we're going to watch just a little bit of the American experience on Nixon. Richard Nixon stood at the top of his party. As he mapped out an ambitious 50-state campaign, he was challenged by his opponent, John F. Kennedy, to a series of televised debates, the first in American history. Even when hospitalized for two weeks with a knee injury, Nixon remained confident, anxious for the debates to begin, eager once again to use television to talk directly to the voters. At the time, there was a feeling that this overall might be a mismatch. Nixon was the candidate who had more prominence, who had been a member of the House, a member of the Senate, and the Vice President of the United States. Kennedy. He didn't have a particularly uh, strong reputation in Congress. He, there was some feeling that he was, to some extent, a playboy. <laughs> he wasn't right too there. serious a senator. So I think people felt that Nixon had the edge. And I think Nixon felt that he had the edge. The candidates need no introduction. Yeah. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. Now, a couple of things about this you can see right away. First off, the most popular style of suits for men, for politicians, gray. Gray suits in the 50s, so going into the 60s. Gray suits were really popular. So Kennedy really went against pattern dressing in a dark suit with a dark tie. Now, after this, you notice every politician, at least male, wears a dark suit and a dark tie, right? Have you noticed that? Because look at them on TV, especially noticeable with black and white television at that time. 
Kennedy really stands out there. Think about the gray suit. What does Nixon do? Yeah, it kind of looks like a floating, scary head right there, doesn't it? And so we had the staph infection. He lost 20 pounds. We looked gaunt. His suit is just a little bit ill-fitting. And then he hit his knee getting out of the limousine, the one he had the infection on. He hit it going into the TV studio. He's in pain. So he just looks bad. But we're not done. According to rules set by the candidates themselves, the like each them. man... The Nixon-Kennedy debates would forever change the way Americans chose their presidents. Political rallies and old-fashioned handshaking became much less important than the image on the television screen. You must understand that Nixon himself had said, I don't want any makeup on for this, these particular debates. What I tried to explain to Dick was he has a certain characteristics of his skin where it's almost transparent. And it was a very nice thought to say, uh, you know, I don't want any makeup, but that he really needed it in order to have what we would call even an acceptable television picture. So, neither man wanted makeup. They both made a big deal about you men don't wear makeup. A man. But Kennedy, when he got to the studio, they snuck him into the bathroom and put a little bit of makeup on because TV catches everything. Nixon not only didn't have makeup on, he had a few things that really were actually two biggies. First off, he had a five o'clock shadow almost immediately. You know what I mean by that? He grew up beard very quickly. He's one of those guys he would grunt, and that's a full beard. <laughs> there it is. And so it constantly had to worry about shaving. Well, there was a product they used to sell that was like stick the order and called Shave Stick. And it's very much like a product they still, I, I found out this morning, they still sell today, and it amazes me they still do, called, called Nair that literally chemically dissolves hair. It's mostly for women and it's, it's really, it's, don't do it. But <laughs> this chase sticks, they would smear it on the face. The idea was it would kind of eat away at whiskers. And I guess it smelled really bad, but it kind of worked. They thought, okay, we'll do it right before so you won't have all of a sudden the kind of a gray area. Cause he already looks gaunt and pale. While Kennedy's been in limousines, he's been outside, he looks tan. And so they put this on, and Nixon has another thing. He really sweat. It's just common. A lot of people do it. But TV, it's a big deal. In fact, that's why they call it the hot glare of television. Especially the cameras back then, they need a lot of light. So think about all the lights in his packed studio, how hot it's going to be. So he's, they're worried about him starting to sweat. So what happens is they smear this stuff on, he gets on stage, he starts sweating almost immediately. You see the kind of the shine developing, which one of the makeup kind of covers that shine. Well, pretty soon, not only start shining, but they almost start to shake because the shade stick started to move. And then it starts to slide down his face and collapse and starts to land on his coat. People called up their television studio and said, man, this man is sick. Please, somebody help him. He looked just, and come on with that floating head image as one TV Media critics said he looked like a sinister chipmunk, and you have problems here. And of course, JFK, here he'd been riding in motorcades all over California with the top down. He looked like a bronze warrior when he came into Chicago. And he really did. Mr. Nixon comes out of the Republican Party. He was nominated by it. And it is a fact that through most of these last 25 years, the Republican leadership has opposed federal aid for education, medical care for the aged. I know what it means to be poor. I know what it means to see people who are unemployed. He's already shot I know him. Senator Kennedy saying. feels as deeply about these problems as I do. But our disagreement is not about the goals for America, but only about the means to reach those goals. The first debate was costly to Nixon. The radio audience thought he had won, but the largest television audience in history had seen the vice president haggard and drawn and had been given its first sustained look at the Kennedy style. So... Did you catch that? The radio audience looked, okay, they listened, and it was really close. But a slight majority, according to a couple polls, had Nixon winning. But television wasn't even close. Yeah. Actually, I like the way Nixon speaks better. He speaks the way he says how he posts, how he speaks more eloquently. He got it Well, and, and that's the thing. You're talking about image there. So it didn't matter what they said or who said the rule, it's just what the impression you got from how they spoke. And that tells you everything you need to know about why this was such a big deal. It was the image on the TV screen that people liked. So you like the image of the way, the, the sound of the way Nixon talked with that too is image. The people like the image. And after this campaign, it became confirmed. We've already talked about that with the log cabin 
and then the voice on the road. Remember, I played John Smith, and now I have DR, and I'm image, 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 image of Kennedy was of a fit, vigorous man, a man people wanted for the new decade in this new era. His slogan, the new frontier seemed to fit, while Nixon looked old and haggard. Now, you know how this sounds, just how they look, that image. And it was a total lie. Kennedy was a sick man, yet he looked fit. Image is more important than anything in modern politics. You can see it so much here. From this day on, they can invent a candidate and turn him to an image. And now it's all television, or at least media on the screen. How they can create a candidate. How they can create an image. And we saw this in the last campaign. You had a pre uh, Secretary Clinton and Senator, well, Secretary got the last position, and she had a long history. And so, a long history of things. So, it was already people had an idea about her. Well, President Trump had no history as a politician. In fact, most people knew him from a television show where he portrayed an image of somebody. That's a big deal. I know it's enough. All you have to appeal to is to about the 10% of voters who don't decide. But they are going to vote. That's when image matters. So, the election would be razor thin. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Look how close the popular vote was. Kennedy got just 120,000 more in the country this side. That's nothing. That's a drop in the bucket. That's how close it was. Electoral College is a little bit further apart. But it was a razor thin victory for Kennedy. Democrats did good all over the country. You'll notice one more thing, too. A few electors in the South, even though these states voted, Oklahoma for Nixon, these states for for Kennedy, they voted for Harry Byrd, the segregation as senator from Mississippi, because Kennedy was for civil rights. And that is already showing how the Democrats are going to be bitterly divided. And you can see a few southern states going to the Republican Party over the issue of civil rights. So, Kennedy would win. One more thing, then really quick. Eisenhower would give his farewell address. And this goes back to George Washington. And he made a warning very similar to Washington. He warned of what he called the military-industrial complex. And what that was is a cabal is a group of the military, arms manufacturers, and politicians they would pay for. And what their main point was, was their fear. What his fear was is that military leaders, a bigger army, that means more officers, more generals, armed manufacturers. Let's be honest, it's money. You make more weapons, it's more money. And politicians, they get money from arms manufacturers. They use military as credibility. What a great political issue. They would greatly exaggerate the Soviet threat to keep the arms race going. And the point was he saw that this group gets more power, more money, more war. That's what Eisenhower feared. By the way, you notice I put or here? It could be the Soviet threat, but when the Soviets are gone, couldn't they exaggerate other threats? Cuba? ISIS? Yeah, I mean, a bunch of pirates are going to attack the U.S. I mean, they're, they're dangerous, but like they're going to invade the U.S. In fact, President Reagan talked about Nicaragua invading the United States. I just want you to ponder that for a second. Yes. Just watch Red Dawn, the first one. And will anybody listen to Ike? No. Not at all. Not at all. In fact, let me give now you a little bit of Ike's Of an immense military establishment and a lot of livelihood are all involved. So is the very structure of our society. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. He would be ignored and be very prescient. There would be a war in five years. But let's quickly talk about the new frontier. Now, don't get all these things down. I put these down to give you an idea of the way that Kennedy was going. He wanted to finish the New Deal, the Fair Deal. Oh, there's going to be a lot of rocking chair references. That's the only chair that felt good on. He could sit down because of his back. 
if it's really thick back brace, so he was always like very stiff looking sometimes when he sat, that's because of the back brace. And, but doesn't he look fit? I mean, he looks so young and, well, I guess he's on drugs and steroids. But, tax cuts for uh, working class people, any poverty programs, but the three biggies you do have to get down. The three biggies of the new frontier he wanted. Civil rights, Medicare, which is health insurance for the elderly, and a massive increase in defense spending. But unlike Ike, who wanted to focus on nuclear weapons, he called this flexible response for a changing world. Focus on conventional, and the big thing is conventional. Yeah. Civil rights, Medicare, and defense. Kennedy was an adept politician. Well, that means you're good at getting legislation passed. All right. So tomorrow, 